This next set of PowerPoints that we are going to look at is related to documentation and informatics for the nursing student. Documentation is anything written or printed on which you rely as a record or proof of patient actions and activities. Documentation consists of a fundamental aspect of nursing care. Accreditation agencies such as the Joint Commission specify guidelines for documentation and nurses need to follow basic principles to maintain confidentiality during the transmission of patient information via verbal, written, or electronic media formats. Confidentiality is paramount when caring for patients. Nurses are legally and ethically obligated to keep all patient information confidential. Breaching confidentiality constitutes a very concerning event for nurses, nursing students, and all healthcare personnel. Nurses may not discuss a patient's examination, observation, conversation, diagnosis, or treatment with other patients or staff not involved in the patient's care. All information pertaining, uh, pertaining to a patient's health care management that is gathered by examination, observation, conversation, or treatment is confidential. And students really need to be cognizant of how they collect and transport patient data. Looking at the medical record, it is a legal document and it requires information describing the care that is delivered to a patient. Current documentation standards require that each patient have an assessment of um, including different components including physical, psychosocial, environmental, self-care, patient education, knowledge level, and discharge planning needs. Nursing documentation standards are set by federal and state regulations, state statutes, standards of care, and accreditation agencies. The Joint Commission standards require that nursing documentation be within the context of the nursing process, include evidence of patient and family teaching and discharge planning. Interdisciplinary communication within the healthcare team is essential and it includes records um, are parts of the chart different reports that can be oral written and also care conferences it's essential that the patient's record contains an accurate account of the patient's health status and again team members communicate information through discussions or conferences such as discharge planning conferences nursing, social work, dietary, medical, physical therapy conferences all pertain um, regarding the progress of the patient towards established discharge goals. Consultations are another form of discussion in which one professional caregiver gives formal advice about the care of a patient to another caregiver. An example would be a nursing a nurse caring for a patient with a chronic wound consults with a wound care specialist. Nurses document referrals, consultations, and conferences in a patient's permanent record to allow all caregivers to plan care accordingly and be aware of what's happening with uh, the patient's current status. The chart serves many different purposes. Communication, communicating what is occurring with the patient, it is also legal documentation. It is used for reimbursement purposes. Uh, DRGs, diagnosis related groups, have become the basis for establishing reimbursement for patient care. And a medical record audit reviews patient care and time determines the amount of money that a facility will be reimbursed for the care that was given. Patient education is included in the record. Research is used to help determine nursing procedures and protocol, protocols to improve quality of care 
collect and study statistical data from patient records, and also auditing or monitoring following programs and looking for mm, minimum standards of care and also if a complaint has been made then uh, the Joint Commission or state agencies will come in and audit and review charting to see if um, specific care minimum standards of care were given. There are legal guidelines for documentation and as a nurse and nursing student you need to correct all errors promptly using the correct method. That would be drawing a line if it is a written document, a single line through it and then initialing above it. Also record all facts. Do not enter personal opinions. Do not leave blank spaces in nurses notes. Write legibly in permanent ink. If any orders were questioned, then record that clarification. Chart only for yourself and never for others. Avoid generalizations or vague comments. Uh, another caregiver needs to be able to come in, read your documentation, and completely understand what's happening with the patient. Start each entry with date, time, and end with your signature and title. And if you do have computerized documentation at the facility you're at, it's essential to keep your computer password secure. A nurse's signature on an entry is a, um, designates accountability for the contents of that entry. And that is with electronic charting and also with written charting. Some other guidelines for quality documentation, make sure that it's factual, state only the facts, that it is completely accurate, uh, that you have completely covered the topic in which you are documenting to, that it's current, chart immediately after the event has occurred or as it is unfolding as some computer documentation is um, currently being facilitated to do in some organizations and also having an organized format and we're going to talk about that in a couple of slides what that formatting would be. Remember that patient statements are subjective data and use quotation marks and the patient's exact words whenever possible. Many hospital agencies use military time, a 24-hour system that avoids misinterpretation of AM and PM times. And so that time frame, that clock is here on the slide for you to see. There are different methods of recording information. There's the paper record. Uh, typically that's set up in an episode-oriented format and key information can be lost. It is a little disorganized because of the format. And there is also the electronic healthcare record, which is uh, common in most facilities. And it's a digital version of the patient's record. It integrates all of the patient's information in one record, and multiple people can access it at one time. It does improve continuity of care. There are different methods of charting or recording data. Narrative is the more traditional method, and it is a story-like format. Problem-oriented medical records, or POMRs, usually consist of a database, a problem list, a care plan, and progress notes. It's a method of documentation that is organized according to the patient's health care problems and data um, is organized by problems or diagnosis. Some different methods of recording progress notes include the SOAP format where you have subjective data first, objective data second, the assessment component, and then the plan. SOAPy 
has all of the SOAP components, but then it also includes interventions and evaluation at the end of it. PI consists of problem, the intervention, and then the evaluation of the patient. And focus charting um, can also be called DAR, is data action and response. Some common record keeping forms would be the admission nursing history form. Uh, it guides the nurse through the complete assessment process on admission. The flow sheets and graphic records, often you will see vital signs in flow sheets and graphic records and you can trend the data. A patient care summary or CARDEX is a um, file or a notebook type format with patient information. Typically, it is not a permanent part of the patient's chart, and many facilities have moved away from the um, CARDEX, patient CARDEX information. Standardized care plans are another common format. They're pre-printed and establish guidelines used for patients. For an example, if a patient comes in and they have a knee surgery, then there's this pre-printed care plan for them, and the nurses can go in and um, add specific goals and needs to this patient. Also, discharge summary forms are another component and they include patients' medications, diet, any community resources or follow-up care and that they might need as they are leaving the facility. And finally, acuity records often are not a par part of the patient's medical record. They are used for determining the hours of care and the staff required for a given group of patients typically used to help identify workloads for nurses and CNAs. Home care documentation is a little different than what you would find in an acute care facility. It has specific guidelines for establishing eligibility for home care. And Medicare has some very specific guidelines for establishing a patient's home care. Cost and reimbursement serve um, often as the basis for documentation by home care nurses. Because of computerized charting, it really, uh, documentation has evolved and patients' records are typically accessible by more than one person. With home care, of course, it is essential that nurses need to document all their services to provide a complete picture of what's been provided and then also for payment from the um, health insurance that that patient has. Long-term healthcare documentation standards were set uh, back in 1987 and governmental agencies come in and actually audit long-term care centers looking if that they're following the standards and policies for documentation. It is also closely linked with uh, fiscal requirements and as there's been an increasing number of older adults and people with disabilities in the United States that require long-term health care facilities, there is more effort being put into monitoring and regulating this. Of course, the goal is a system of clinical documentation that improves care for residents and increases reimbursement for that care. And this concludes the first part of this documentation PowerPoint, and we will finish up in my next slides.